welcome to your June love forecast. I'm so happy to be here with you and I hope you guys are having a wonderful rest of May before we go into June here. And for your reading today, I am going to be using the Taramuka right here. Uh, this is by Lo Scatabeo and it's a gorgeous deck and based on the Art Nouveau artwork um, of Alphonse Muka. And also, I will be casting the runes today. These are fluorite runes, and they were requested by a patron. So I am going to be using them in my reading today in conjunction with reading the cards. And then, at the end of your reading, I will be pulling a message from the Rumi Oracle. So if that sounds good, let's go ahead and just jump into your reading. So this reading is for all my Leo suns, moons, risings, and those on the cusp that may be watching. The cards are all shuffled and ready to go. I'm going to continue shuffling on camera. Spirit, what are the love messages and energies that you have for the sign of Leo for the month of June 2017? This is their love forecast. What are the messages and energies surrounding Leo regarding their love lives for the month of June 2017? shuffles here. Okay, we have the Ten Cards Down and the Celtic Cross, and I am going to be reading the runes today, or casting the runes today. Okay, so... You do have one rune, the rest are face down, so those are messages we're not meant to know. I do not read the runes that are face down. There are readers out there that do read them, but I feel that we'll have enough information with the cards right now. And then you have one little rune here in your near future. So let's take a look at your cards. The Eight of Pentacles in reverse, crossed by the Nine of Pentacles. Well, I already know right now that you are dealing with financial issues and work this month. Career could be very important to you. The base of the situation, another eight, the eight of cups. In your thoughts and feelings, Leo, this is what you know to be true. What you'd like to make your own, you have the page of swords. In your recent past, you have the sun. In your near future, you have the Ace of Swords in reverse. How you see yourself, you have the Four of Swords in reverse. In your environment, this is also how your significant other or the person you think about the most may be viewing you or dealing with you. They have the Two of Pentacles. Your hopes and fears are the Ace of Pentacles. And your outcome for the month of June is the Queen of Wands. All right, interesting. Yeah, so you walk into the month of June with the Eight of Pentacles in reverse. Some of you are having trouble within your work situations. Some of you are out of work or not working enough. This could be a lack of focus or discipline. In a specific relationship, such as a love relationship, you may not be interested in putting the work into it. So this is you uh, basically 
ignoring the other person or turning your back on someone and or just uh, some of you are working too much or just putting your head in your work for example so you are but I see this as in terms of a romantic situation this is uh, absolutely you might have had romantic feelings at one time you might have been studying someone very intently but here I see you are dropping that that person you are no longer interested it's kind of like you are um, you're not working on that anymore you're not focusing on that person anymore you're working on something else but here this is a card about prudence and discipline and focus and I feel that to be a bit lacking for you at the beginning of June now this isn't going to last throughout the whole month but it is an integral it is an interesting uh, it is a huge factor for you um, so what what is a challenge for you is the nine of Pentacles so your independence your freedom your financial security, uh, your ability to be on your own two feet, to survive on your own two feet. This is what is a challenge for you. I think that you would like to be on your own, Leo. I think that you would like to have everything. I don't think that love is that important to you right now. Um, if if I'm going to be honest, because these cards have to do with material security. Um, they have to do with finances, they have to do with wealth, and they're very materialistic. And so you are more focused on your material world currently, and that is going to impact all of the cards surrounding the inner cross. So in your recent past, you have the sun, which is your card Leo, you're ruled by the sun. And I felt you were very in touch with your inner child, you might have been feeling uh, a bit extravagant, I would say, in the, in the, the spotlight, um, and happy and free. So I see a lot of happiness in your past. I see you were shining very brightly, very vibrant, possibly a bit childlike. Children may have been important to you in your past, in your recent past. But I also see this sun as clarity and seeing, seeing, seeing things clearly and things coming out into the open and just being very free, being very happy. But now I think your focus is more on your job, your work, um, getting that going. And uh, for some of you, it's recovering some wealth here because we do need you, you your challenge is the Nine of Pentacles. So it has to do with your independence. It has to do with, you know, being a bachelor, a bachelorette, it has to do with kind of being on your own for a little bit. The reason I say that is because you have another eight in your foundation, the eight of cups. So I see you walking away from something. It's not necessarily a sad thing. It can be a soul searching energy. Um, you have a lot of emotions here that you need to move on from. Those are all experiences, and you now understand what each of those cups means to you. You say thank you for that experience, thank you for those emotions, and you're ready to move forward. And you do. But I think that currently, some of you are out of work, some of you are struggling to maintain your focus, to maintain your discipline. Um, and eights are about change. Eights are about transition and change and movement. So there is movement forward here for you. I think it's a bit slow in the beginning, but I think that you're driven by your emotions to move forward, as well as your financial circumstances. Those are the most important things for you. I hope that makes sense. And then in your thoughts and feelings, you have the Page of Swords. Now I'm not seeing this as a person, I'm seeing this as you. And I see you looking out here into the future. I feel like you're waiting for something. You're curious. I think you are also being objective because see how he's up high here looking down on a valley. So I think that you're a bit of an intellectual this month. You're in your head. You're thinking about things. You're 
not using your sword. So you may be thinking about communicating, but you're not communicating. You may be doing some kind of idle communication, just like blabbery communication, sort of like, hi, how are you, blah, blah, blah. But it's, it's to me, it's more curiosity. You're just observing your situation. You're not really taking action. Um, again, it's not a romantic energy. It's more of an intellectual energy. The Page of Swords is an intellect. Uh, he's also a bit immature. It could, it can represent a person, it can represent an air sign, a Gemini, Libra, or an Aquarius that you're thinking about, or a younger person, or someone who's more um, immature with their words. But I'm really seeing you, you know, observing a situation and thinking about it, but not taking action. Which is interesting because in your near future you have another Swords energy. We have the Ace of Swords in reverse. What does this mean, Leo? Well, this energy happens around the middle of June for you. It is concerning love. We have Burkana here, which is love. Alright, so you are confused about love. Okay, You are also confused about what the truth is. You're in denial. You're not communicating. There's no communication here. Um, you could be lying or not telling the truth. The truth is not uh, known about some situation and you're not able to move in a new direction. I think mentally you'd like to move in a new direction, but there is some confusion for you regarding love, capital L, love. Um, I think you desire mental clarity on some issue that you're not receiving currently. And obviously I'm here to help you figure out what it is you're confused about. I can see that you're taking a break here. You have the Four of Swords in reverse, which is my vacation. You may be playing dead in a relationship or taking an extended break from someone. It is a long break because the card is reversed. Here I would just say you're taking a rest, but here we have the Knight in repose. The three swords have been hung up on the wall, which indicates the time after a hard break, and here you are still lying down. Um, I think you're overthinking something, to be quite honest with you. You're very much in your head. Uh, you've extended this vacation long past its due date. But it's because you're unclear about something and you just keep thinking about it. Um, the truth will set you free. That's one of the things that I want to say about this card in reverse. The truth will set you free. What is the truth, Leo? So you can get out of this kind of asleep, uh, being kind of laying dead, playing dead, uh, playing possum is what I would say. And then in your environment you have the two of pentacles, just some kind of juggling act here. And this may be how your partner is viewing you or dealing with you or the person you think about the most. can also indicate travel, changes, ups and downs. But um, I also feel like someone here is juggling. So it could be that uh, your partner or someone else in your environment is seeing more than one person or is juggling uh, several people and you're one of them and you're taking a vacation from that person or you're taking a break. This is a lot of multitasking, adjustment, and play involved. So someone's playing around here in your environment. Are they playing with you? You seem to be ignoring them. I see two here though. So you're not really sure what's going on. I think you're confused. Your hopes and fears have to do with the Ace of Pentacles, which is a new beginning. This is what you want. It's a beginning that has a lot of potential and it's grounded in reality. So you, you're you hoping for this bright new beginning and you can see, it's almost like you can see it going somewhere. That's what I see from this card. and. You may have like um, 
Uh, you, it also has to do with money. Okay, so it's a gift. You may want like someone to give you money or you may be hoping for a gift or you may be hoping for a new beginning, but a new healthy beginning. It's more practical and grounded in reality and it's like not just the Ace of Cups, it's not the Ace of Cups or the Ace of Wands or the Ace of Swords, although you do have the Ace of Swords here. The Ace of Pentacles to me is about, so for example, it's a more uh, like I can see a happy future with this person because, or I can see potential with this person because I see practically how it could work together. I could see us going and doing these, this, then, that thing going out into the future. Like, see this archway? This represents an opening here, a doorway. A doorway leading into a golden future. So it's a very optimistic energy, but it's also very grounded in reality. This is in your hopes and fears. So this is what you're hoping to manifest. And then your outcome is the Queen of Wands, which is you, Leo. And I see that you will be completely in your element I've always wondered what this this is, because uh, I see it as a camera. I feel like you're going to be very creative. I see being very creative. I also see that fire energy, and uh, I'm looking at the wild roses here, and very passionate, very charismatic, and it's your sunflower there. So I feel like, Leo, you are becoming more yourself. And if you're not feeling yourself right now, you will be feeling yourself by the end of June. And you'll be going into, will be going into the new moon in Cancer. So I suspect around the new moon in Cancer is when you start feeling yourself. And you start being your creative, vibrant, beautiful self again. I don't think you're going to be feeling yourself for the majority of June. I think it's going to be a bit tough for you. I think you need to get clear and you are going to get clear, um, but I think that you do seek a new beginning, a kind of a clearing of the slate, so to speak. Your focus this month will be on getting yourself in a uh, financially independent situation. I think you'd like to be able to stand on your own two feet. I think you'd like to be on your own. I don't think that love is that big of a priority for you. I think you're just kind of watching a situation unfold. And you may also be taking a snooze on a relationship. So that's my interpretation of the cards. It will not resonate with everyone. Pulling an oracle message for you. I'm going to pull this one out. I've been pulling them out. She offers the sacred wine, so drink. That is card 32. I was very happy to see your card here, Leo. Because it means that you're returning back to your natural state. You will be in your element. So, there's a little poem here I'm going to read to you. And then there's a message. An extended message, so it will take about 10 minutes for me to read through. So if you want to come back and listen to it, you can, or listen to the whole thing now. O oh, wine giver of enlightened hearts, offer me the wine of your kindness. For this is the reason you have brought me here from the desert of oblivion. O oh, beautiful wine giver, pour me the wine that gives me insight. Offer me the wine from the sea of love and fill my heart with pearls. Pour it into my heart until I shred the veil and go beyond reason. My spirit is consumed by judgment. My life is reduced by thoughts. Pour that precious wine over the frozen cries of skeptics until their words become warm and their, way and their nays become yeas. Will you say yes to me? 
I want to take you with me on a wild adventure. There we shall be, tripping, stumbling, falling like fools, laughing our most unconstrained laughter as we drink the sweetest of offerings. Raucous and silly shall we be, though undoubtedly we are from the noblest and most royal lineage. Nonetheless, standing inside the tavern, warm and illuminated by the golden hearth fires, we will hold on to each other, barely able to stand up straight, crying with so much laughter, sweet wine coursing through our blood. Beloved, you are being offered a gift that is beyond your understanding. This gift is from the hand of the Divine Beloved, an offering to you that will lift you beyond what you have known into the next opening of your inner eye, of your heart, of your soul, so that it may caress the earth with the light of heaven. This may sound wonderful. Indeed, it is. Yet welcome though this gift may be, there is a trick to receiving it, you see. When the sweet wine is offered, you must drink, but also be willing to become drunk. You must be willing to let go of your control. You must trust in what will happen. Trust that you will be cared for, for that you may, or that you may appear to be the fool. Very important. Trust in what will happen. Trust that you will be cared for, or that you may appear to be the fool. You must be willing to not have all the answers, or indeed any answers at all, my wise soulmate. And trust that this is according to the higher plan and not some inadequacy or error. Trust. So we accept the gift that is coming to you, the offering that the sacred feminine brings to you now. It is sweet wine, she offers. It shall be an enjoyable journey receiving this gift, a wearing away of resistance and restraints towards life, through the sheer pleasure of aliveness without thought. Oh, what a journey this is to be for you. So much that is truly wonderful and incredible. Sacred and extraordinary awaits you. You who, are, you who are asked to drink from the generous cup the great beloved is bringing towards your lips. So what if your speech becomes incoherent and you have no words to describe what you feel? or if the world around you ceases to understand you. Could any of that compare to the great bliss of being fully alive and dancing with the Divine Ones in dazed splendor at the beauty of life? This is a party you want to attend, trust me, even though no one will be much interested in talking because they will be too busy dancing. Everyone will envy you. Though if you open your heart to invite them too, many will say, oh no, I have to wash my hair, and I have to sort through my accounts and count my fingers and my toes. It will take me too long and I simply won't be ready to attend. But you go. Of course. You enjoy yourself, whilst I am working long and hard at things so very important. And you may hang your head and wonder if you too should stay at home and wash your hair and tend to your accounts and count your fingers and toes, many times over perhaps, to make sure you get it right. But then you'll hear the distant sounds of clinking glasses, of music, of stomping and dancing and laughter, and you'll think a wise thought. So wise, indeed, that you'll, f you'll stop thinking immediately after thinking it. That thought will be, forget this to-do list. I am going Sacred Honoring Ritual. If you can have a glass with some drinkable liquid, and if you are not over the age of 21, or you are not allowed to consume alcohol, then don't do this with alcohol. Water is fine, or juice, or wine, if appropriate, and you prefer this option. Then have it ready for your ritual. Place your hands over the filled glass and say the following. All things emanate from the Divine Beloved, and the Divine Beloved lives in all things. In this sacred nectar, I receive the gift of love from the Divine Beloved. I sip, I drink, I partake of the sacred gift offered to me now. I place my mind aside and choose instead 
to bear witness to what is offered now through the gift of grace. I ask for assistance that I may remember what it is to play and to find the joy of living, the, the delight, I'm sorry, the delight of my path and the humor of life. Bless me with such grace, so be it. Drink. You have finished your sacred honoring ritual. Unless you feel like dancing around your lounge room, after which you shall have then completed your sacred honoring ritual. So Leo, the message is clear. Go out and have some fun. You have uh, put the work in. You are clearly very disciplined and hardworking and trying your best. Don't get too serious. Remember this inner child. This, this is you, Leo. Okay. Be sure to go out and have some fun this month and don't take life too seriously because um, you are the uh, wild child, the party child of the Zodiac and the party would be not a party without you. So take care. Many blessings.